Good afternoon. Um, uh, really disappointed uh, in how we how we coached and played today. Uh, hats off to Texas. Thought Texas uh, played very well and capitalized. Uh, you know, particularly in the first half when they needed to. Um, you know, we had some guys that were um, that did not participate uh, today, and I don't think that had anything to do with uh, the outcome of the game. And um, we were good enough, uh, you know, on both sides of the ball uh, to be a lot more competitive and have a chance to win the game than what we uh, displayed. Um, you know, from coaching and getting them ready, uh, that responsibility starts with me. And we obviously, I obviously did a, a very poor job of doing that. You know, you know, I lose a game 49 to nothing uh, and have all this great coaching and scheming and uh, everything else, uh, you know, without again uh, the accountability beginning and ending, you know, with me. So obviously I've not done a, a great job. I think our players have been incredibly invested uh, through the first half of the season and um, frustrated for them, uh, for them not to, uh, to see the, the results that uh, they're all fighting for every single day. Uh, you know, some ways it would look like uh, maybe a tired football team. And, um, you know, there's, there's probably, you know, several reasons uh, why right now we're having to play uh, near perfect football and um, and we're just not able to do that right now. So I thought we had um, plenty of opportunities in the first half uh, where, you know, if we uh, take advantage of uh, some short fields, uh, you know, execute at a, at a better level, help them with play calls, uh, whether we're getting off the field, they had four touchdown drives of 79 plus yards, um, no quick touchdown drives, uh, you know. So there's plenty of opportunity within those drives, in my opinion, that we can uh, do a better job of coaching and playing to help us get off the field. I thought we had um, a lot of early momentum in the game, and and uh, we just could not capitalize. And right now, you feel like you you need to play um, close to perfect right now. So we're not. Uh, playing with great confidence. And like I said, I, uh, looking back on it, you just look, I don't know if it's just a little bit of, um, uh, you know, not quite as sharp as we need to be. So we'll obviously look at everything. And, um, you know, I thought, you know, one of the critical uh, points in the game was early, you know, and when we turn the ball over on downs, uh, you know, we have first and goal at the eight, and I thought on you know earlier downs there, first or second down, we had a an opportunity to uh, to walk in, and we didn't, and we end up with no points. So, uh, first half not taking advantage of the field position, and then again, not being efficient enough on defense uh, and their four touchdown drives to to get off the field. You know, and any opportunity that we wanted to get back in the game, you know, we just uh, you know didn't have it in the second half. You know, had 25 yards. Uh, 24 yards of offense in the second half, and um, and still again uh, game control wise on on the defensive side of the ball, uh, we're no better in the second half. So with that, I'll open it up. <clears throat> All right. Uh, again, raise your hand. We got Mike Runners. We questions for coach or player. We'll start in the front. Brent, I uh, wanted to ask you about Dylan Gabriel. At, right here, Brent. At what point did you realize this week that he wasn't going to be available? And can you talk about maybe long term? Are you looking at this as a long term injury possibly? And also the game plan going in without dealing into this contest? Well, the, the con concussion protocol, uh, obviously that's uh, up to our team doctors. And they evaluate him throughout the course of the week. And, you know, they, they get to some points where they, they make decisions, uh, good or bad, or hey, let's continue to evaluate him. Somewhere in the mid midweek, uh, you know, we we realized that he probably wouldn't be uh, the guy, and and certainly, you know, the the health and the safety of our players is first and foremost. I'm a dad. I had a son get a concussion this week uh, in a moped accident. He didn't he didn't travel to, to Boston College, so uh, you know, uh, nothing more important um, than uh, being uh, mindful of, of of our players' health, and so. But he, he, he actually he felt great, you know, uh, whatever the protocols. I don't get into all the, uh, the weeds of it. I don't get frustrated by it. It is, is what it is. And um, for all the obvious reasons, you got to 
uh, be incredibly uh, cautious and uh, careful. And um, uh, so, but he starting on, you know, Sunday, Monday, you know, he started to feel, you know, much better. And, and I don't think he had, uh, to my knowledge, any setbacks during the course of the week. So we'll see. They'll continue to evaluate him and, uh, you know, on his av availability, they'll, they'll let me know. Farmer. And then uh, Brent, right, right here in front, uh, following up on what, what Eric asked, the, the, the plan coming in with not only Davis, but the, the, the different Wildcat looks, uh, what was your, your thought process uh, there? And uh, you have success there early with, with Braden, especially running the football uh, out of it. Um, how difficult is that to, to balance as you look to what's being successful versus them, you know, adjusting to that eventually? Yeah, again, I felt like that I was um, first half had incredible success and obviously late there uh, in the half, you know, we had the, the interception after a big run and, you know, really until the second half, I don't feel like they were, I thought our guys did a great job of executing that, that part of the plan and then however you're doing, you know, when you're in a base offense and then that and you're just measuring and uh, all of it goes into into play on what you're going to, you know, go with a hot hand or uh, the scheme that seems to be working. And, you know, I thought our offense did a great job of, uh, again, not we, we didn't execute and take advantage of good early field position uh, like we needed to uh, to be able to win a game like this. But I thought they had excellent game control, had a good plan. Uh, there's some layups, uh, you know, that we got to make, you know, and, you know, when you play again against a good team, a team that has a pulse, you got to make the plays that are there. And um, I really feel like uh, we, we had some opportunities we didn't take advantage of. And you'd like to always get a play call back here or there. Um, but, uh, you know, I thought that that was uh, something that um, worked in our advantage, particularly the first half. Left side. Yeah. Hey, Brent, Garen, over here. Uh, I know how competitive you are. I know how invested in the rivalry you've been when it comes to, to OU Texas. How, how much of a, of a shock is today to your, to your system? Uh, shock? I don't know about shock. I mean, just, you know, uh, you know, I think you hit it on the head when you're a competitor and you're uh, used to success, uh, whether it's this game or any game, you know, there's a standard of performance that you're, um, that you're fighting and competing for every single day. And so when you uh, come up short uh, as a coach or certainly as a, as a team, uh, it's incredibly disappointing, uh, like you would expect. Uh, shocked, uh, nothing shocks me. You know, this game will punish you uh, when uh, there's all, when you don't do all kinds of different things, whether it's coaching or playing. Uh, and again, I think a little bit, you know, our guys have busted their butt um, for since fall camp. And, you know, I'm looking at everything. You know, a group of guys have been incredibly committed uh, to what we've asked them to do, and maybe, maybe you know, um, you know, one of those factors is we need to be fresher. You know, uh, look at everything. Yeah, you know, Brent. Two weeks ago, this very time, you're two, three and zero, oh, ranked sixth in the country. Mm -hmm. Everything's great. What the heck's happened? And particularly on defense, I mean, yeah. you're not you're not stopping anybody. Yeah, it's that's a great question. I mean, there's. Yeah, I don't think it's any one particular thing, but right now we're not playing with the kind of confidence, the kind of fundamentals. Um, you know, uh, again, we're, we're not getting off of blocks like we need to. Um, uh, we're just not able to play with any kind of rhythm uh, on defense. So uh, it's, I don't think it's any one particular thing, but we, we got a lot of work to do. And again, this. Just halfway through the season, and as I told the team starting on Monday in our preparation, that regardless of how this week goes, don't forget because I know how everybody the the buildup of OU Texas can be. You know, it's just game six. You know, when this one's over, and we've got a you know an entire new season. You know, to continue to play. So, uh, you know, right now we're not playing to our ability, in my opinion. You know, we're we're under uh, performing, and that. You know, that's that's the most frustrating part. And, uh, and that starts, again, that's coaching to me. You know, that's coaching. And so we got to do a better job of, of helping our guys. And, but I think the responsibility is probably, uh, truthfully, it's a, it's a little bit of everywhere. Uh, questions for players that were open as well. We can go to the back. 
Hey, Brent. Um, the biggest question fans have, I think, is why not try a different quarterback? And I'm curious the approach this week with basically preparing a, a separate offense, did that take away from being able to get backups reps this week to, to play in this matchup? Yeah, no, we, we got backups reps all, all week. And, um, and so you, you base it on, you know, what you saw during the course of the week and certainly, uh, you know, what we have seen since we started fall camp, you know, and felt like, like Davis was the best, uh, gave us the best opportunity to, to win and be successful. Uh, before we take that question, also, there are Oklahoma players available on the concourse as well. Go ahead. Back to Brent, uh, you've, uh, you've put some teams, some Texas teams, you've been a part of teams here that put Texas on the wrong side of history, biggest blowout, this and that. That happened to you guys today, mm -hmm. biggest blowout, shutout, first shutout in a long time, all that stuff. Is that a commentary on how far you have to go with this team, what, what you saw today? No, I, I, I don't ever, you know, I always have the right perspective, you know. Uh, you know having been on the right side of it, you know, uh, three or four times, you know. Uh, it's never as bad as it seems and never as good as it, as it <coughs> seems, you know. Uh, right now, it's, it's not good. Uh, you know, I'm not trying to mask that, but, uh, you know, I, I thought through those uh, today, you know, while, while I was on that sideline. You know, and you know, you know what that what that feels like, and it's not good. And uh, you know, we we've got to do a, a better job of helping our guys. That's what I know. So, uh, right in the front, coach. Uh, the offense obviously struggled, but it struggled pretty much from the beginning. Just wondering what type of impact uh, was that demoralizing to a defense. Uh, I guess one thing kind of feeds off another. I wondered your thoughts on that. Well, I think, you know, it's a, it's a game of um, – there's a lot of factors that go into playing well, uh, you know. And, uh, you know, what I know is nobody on offense has, you know, got to leverage the football. Nobody on offense has got to tackle in the A-gap. Nobody on offense has got to play the half field. And so, you know, I don't believe – you know, that's what they pay the coach for, you know, to keep guys uh, on edge, uh, excited to play, motivated, uh, inspired. And, and again, I thought our guys competed, you know. We didn't coach them great and we didn't play great. Uh, but I thought our guys, you know, continued to compete. And um, so uh, it's never fun when you're in the middle of, of, of a storm and, you know, you can't get, you know, you can't find your way out of it. And uh, so, uh, it's you know can be discouraging for everybody involved, and uh, but again you know that's the challenge you know is that you, the only way you're going to get better and get out of the storm is by having the right mindset you know to continue to attack it and uh, stay in the fight and and so that's what you know we're focused on doing moving forward. Any questions for players? Those front left. Hey Brent, I'm just you know I know your first thing on defense you always try to do is stop the run, but. They even went, you know, third and seven. They would run the ball and get a first down and things. Talk about your struggles today or what was going on trying to stop the run today. Yeah, we just can't get into any rhythm right now. You know, we can't get into a rhythm. And uh, some of it, maybe it's in plus territory and uh, they have a four down mindset. And we just, uh, you know, in my opinion, we can't get out of our own way right now. And, it, uh, you know, so we got to do a better job of helping our guys and, uh, you know, it's where it starts, you know, starts in the run game. The team that wins this game, uh, you know, rushes the ball better. And we knew that going in and uh, just did not do a great job. You know, we didn't do a good job of tackling. We weren't great at the point of attack consistently like you need to be, particularly in that first half when, you know, a two or three yard gain turns into five or six. We talked about moving the pile the other way and not letting them fall forward and we didn't we weren't very consistent at that. And that all plays a part into it too, you know. Uh, getting there is half the battle, and then finishing is better. Right now, we're not great at you know a lot of things. We'll stay front left. This is for uh, the the guys that have been here the previous years. This is new territory for you guys uh, as far as the three losses. Where, where, how do you how do you continue to, I guess, look to have more confidence each and every week after the last three weeks and how do you keep the younger guys focused on that and Brent for you as well how do you make sure your players don't continue 
to kind of look in the past and dwell on it because it's a new territory for the program. Uh, David, you want to start with? Uh, there's a mindset that's been instilled into this football program, and we're very unshakable no matter win or loss. So answer that question what we have to do moving forward to keep everybody locked in is just exactly what we've been doing since the beginning of the season. You know, um, there's a formula that goes into what we do every single day of the week, and I have full intention of following that. I have full intention of leading the younger guys behind me to follow that as well. Uh, Reggie, anything else? Uh, yeah, just kind of piggybacking off of that, I think that it's uh, just one of the things you have to take day by day. Uh, you talk about instilling confidence in our guys. Well, uh, you just take that one play at a time and just kind of keep uh, building and building and building and stacking days. And as far as our young guys are concerned, I love the group. I love my position group. I love the group that we have. Uh, I love the, the older guys and the young guys. I love how close we are. So as far as men instilling confidence in them, just, just allowing them to, to know that they can make plays too. It's, it's not a, it's, it doesn't have to be every old guy to make a play. Uh, the young guys can make a play. They can contribute, and they can just they can. We can all be ball players. We can all get a lot better, uh, and that's the challenge is to get better. So we think we all relish that. Brayden. Yeah, um, <clears throat> this is very this is uncharted territory for us. But at the end of the day, a lot of all the guys up here have played a lot of ball. And I think the biggest thing for us right now is just to lead a little bit harder, you know, push a little bit harder and left everything, every stone unturned. You know, everything has to be said, everything has to be brought, you know, held accountable. Um, so I think that's the biggest thing right now is just for the leaders to lead a little bit harder because we have all the experience and uh, the young guys don't know. So we have to lead harder and just keep on chipping away, stay together. Davis, anything to add? Uh, yeah, I mean, I haven't been a guy who's been a uh, part of this rivalry before. It's my first time. Um, but just uh, been on a team that's won a lot of games before and uh, I know that this team has the talent to do so. Um, we're definitely tight-knit. Uh, it's truly a family. And uh, just the way that we're going to get past is that, uh, that windshield mentality. you got a small rear view, for a re rear view mirror for a reason. So that's what just got to keep looking forward. Stay on the left side. Yeah, for Reggie and David, Brent mentioned losing confidence over the last couple of weeks. Do you kind of feel that, and do you know how to get out of that or get confidence back, other than just looking at the scoreboard at the end of a game? Reggie, well, start first, please. I, I would just say, because yeah. I didn't get a follow up on your question, Brandon, you know, the same things that it takes to be successful, you got to have those same qualities, you know, when you're when things aren't going well, you know, so if, if that's courage, if that's toughness, it's that that's belief, all those same qualities in a moment of, of weakness, uh, when things aren't going your way, the same things it takes to be successful. You gotta, you gotta, you know, rely on the foundation of, of, of those things. And uh, so that's what will sustain you, you know, to have, you know, that type of, of mindset. So not an easy thing to do. And, you know, the, uh, you know, the adversity and the, the failure, losing um, can, can divide, divide a team, you know, quickly, right? You see it all the time. Okay, or people just make a choice. It's literally that easy. Okay, that no, I believe in this. I have that unshakable belief in what we're doing. And again, there's you know again responsibility goes everywhere. And and when guys you know they, they know what's real, uh, you know, and they have some accountability, and we I know we got the right guys. They'll know how to respond. And uh, you know just to piggyback what what David said. Uh, Reggie, you want to start with a question about confidence? Yeah, I think it's a, it's a really important thing to just stay together as a team. Um, we, we're all we got and we all we need, quite honestly. So it's one of those things to where, okay, what's the outside world telling, saying about us? None of that matters. Okay, what are we telling ourselves? Okay, well, we're still Oklahoma. And at the end of the day, we're, that's all we have. That's all we need. Uh, so you talk about instilling confidence back in our young guys. just uh, more of a, a relearning, re-understanding to the fact that we are still who we say we are. We still are the, the ball players that we have been. It's just a matter of doing the little things right and just uh, making the right plays, making your layups, as Coach Venable says. But we are still who we say we are. David, anything to add there? Um, your question, I think you said that we had lost, you asked if we felt as if we lost confidence. And from my perspective, no, not at all, because the outside world sees this game is just like big plays, touchdowns, us not scoring any points. but. I know everything that, and we know everything that we need to do to, in order to fix it. And that's where, like, 
a huge part of the confidence come from. You know, we're not losing confidence, we're gaining confidence because we know, oh, if we just do this, then this play would have turned out this way. If we just do this, then this series would have turned out this way. So um, I think just keeping the guys locked in into the, 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 the details of everything we had to do as far as uh, execution or defense. Uh, I've got time for two more. I'll go to the front right. Davis, I'm kind of curious. This is a heck of a start to get your first start at a place like Oklahoma. How tough was it, the whole crowd, 50-50? I'm sure they gave you some looks to try to confuse you. Just what were you seeing? How tough was it to play in this environment for you? Um, I've been in a bunch of places, uh, a lot of them uh, pretty crazy. But this, obviously, this is a one-of-a-kind spot. Uh, one, one side of the field, it's all love, and one side, it's all hate. Um, when it came down to seeing things, I feel like we, we did know what they were doing. Uh, defensively, they just um, got the better of us on some plays, and we, uh, we hurt ourselves on some plays. So uh, it was definitely quite the experience, uh, my first start. Um, but I felt like I was calm, cool, collected the whole time, and I feel like uh, we just got to keep going. Uh, one more, left side. Yeah, for uh, Braden and Davis, what was this past week of practice like for you guys as you kind of picked up some new responsibilities in the offense, just figuring that stuff out? And how do you feel like you guys handled the kind of the ins and outs of today, the complexity of running the offense you were running, where sometimes one of you's out wide and another guy's in the backfield and just switching it around a little bit? Uh, Braden, start first. Uh, yeah, I thought we had a pretty good week of practice. You know, sometimes. Uh, your results don't always match up with the work that you, you know, put in. And that's the frustrating part for us right now. Um, you know, there's a lot of extra responsibility put on different guys, but the guys that we put it on are guys that have been around for a long time and are used to, you know, being held responsible. <coughs> Excuse me. But being, you know, held responsible and having a lot of responsibility. So I don't think it was too much of a challenge. Uh, I think, like David said, you know, there's there, a full, in a football game like this, there's going to be plays made on either side, and then I think we did hold ourselves back a little bit. So um, I thought the preparation and the intent was right. At the end of the day, we just have to be better, and that's all it is. And Davis. Oh uh, yeah, uh, just speaking on preparation, I feel like uh, it was a week for me, um, just personally, uh, going through that full full week as uh, preparing for the starter. Um, it was definitely different for me, but uh, definitely a great experience. Um, I feel like throughout the week we had great energy uh, through practice. Um, didn't let those uh, two losses shake us. So like you said, uh, sometimes uh, the preparation you put in, uh, the outcome doesn't uh, reflect that. But uh, just another week uh, ahead of us that we just got to go in and uh, keep our heads down and just keep working and block out all the, uh, that extra noise that from, from people that really uh, uh, shouldn't uh, have an effect on how you uh, view yourself or view this scene. Okay, that concludes. Thank you very much, Jason.